Hey there! In this video we are going to take a look at logarithmic and exponential derivatives. So before we do that, let's spend just a little time here reviewing some of the um, change of base formulas and some of the other log properties that we might find helpful as we go through and find these derivatives. So let's talk about how to rewrite a logarithm. Okay, one thing that you might not have used uh, um, as often lately is a change of base formula. And that's because, um, for example, if we have something like log base 7 of 10, we now have a button on our graphing calculator that's called log base where we can just type that in. So we may not have had a reason necessarily numerically to use this change of base formula, but what the change of base formula says is, let's say calculating in base 7 is not all that ideal, we can actually change this to whatever base we want if we do it something like this. This is equivalent to log of 10, log of the tall, over log of the small. Small in font size, not necessarily smaller in value. So if I do this on my calculator, I will see that that is the same numeric value and what I did here is change them both into common logarithms um, or log base 10. Well, you can also go to log base 2 or log base 3 or log base 4, but the most convenient base for us is going to be E. So we're going to convert this and say that it's natural log of 10 over natural log of 7. So I'm going to specifically rewrite that logarithm like so. So algebraically speaking, if I have something like log base A, of some function, then my rewrite for this is going to be natural log of the tall, so natural log of the function over natural log of the base. And let me take a second and prove this to you numerically that this works just in case you forgot. Okay, so if I type in log base 7 of 10, I can go to math here on my graphing calculator and I just scroll down there's log base, option A, hit enter, and it will show me the form that I have it in. So log base 7, this logarithmic form of 10, and there's the numeric value for that. Well, that's equivalent to log of 10 divided by log of 7. Make sure you close your argument parentheses there. And that's also equivalent to natural log of 10 over natural log of 7. So this change of base formula is just changing my logarithmic expression to be whatever base I might find convenient or necessary at the time, but the numerical values um, will stay equivalent. So same thing is true with our algebraic values. So this change of base formula is why my derivative is what it is. Um, so before I get into the derivative, let's talk about just a couple other log properties. So for example, if I have log or natural log we're going to use of a product, so natural log of AB, then this separates into natural log of A plus natural log of B. And hopefully you remember why, and it's basically because, you know, logarithms or natural logarithms are exponents. And so we're really talking about our exponent rules um, when we're multiplying with the same base you know, we add our exponents. Okay, so similarly, natural log of A over B as a quotient will turn into the difference. And then one other thing that we will use quite often is if we have natural log of A to some M exponent, then that exponent can come down in front and become multiplied by my logarithm. Okay, let's talk derivatives for a minute. So for natural log derivatives, if I am starting with ln f of x over ln of a, then this derivative, we know the derivative of natural log functions is the derivative of the argument over itself. Well, keep in mind, ln of a is a numerical value. So that's just a coefficient. So another way to write this would be if I have this as a function, y equals, I could say that instead of dividing by natural log of a, this is really the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal of natural log of a. 
So this is just another way of writing that logarithmic expression. Well, now when I go to find this derivative, y prime, 1 over the natural log of a is a coefficient. So coefficients stay in our derivatives. And then the derivative of natural log of an argument is the derivative of that argument, so we'll say f prime of x to keep it general, over itself. It's always the derivative of the argument over itself. So there's my derivative, which I wrote as dy dx in the box. So we'll apply that. And then we'll also look at exponential functions um, and I'm going to not only apply this rule, but also sort of prove that rule to you when we get to those exponential derivatives. All right, so let's try and find some derivatives. Okay, so in number one, we have y equals log base 2 of this 5x cubed minus 17x. Now, again, I can rewrite using that change of base and then do the derivative from there you may eventually see some commonalities or some patterns and you might go right to the answer. So I can show you that when we're done with this one as well. So if I just go to a rewrite, I'm not finding the derivative yet. I am just rewriting this original equation. So it is still y equals, but instead of log base two, I'm gonna write this as natural log so that my derivative is a little bit more friendly. So I'm gonna say it's natural log of the tall, so of that argument, over natural log of the small, or natural log of your base. Okay, so instead of seeing the divided by natural log of two, and you're gonna see this quite a bit, I could rewrite my original one more time if I wanted to, and instead of dividing by that ln two, I could write it as that coefficient, so I can really see it as a coefficient of one over ln two, because again, that natural log of two needs to be in my denominator, times natural log of five x cubed minus 17 x. So again, one over natural log of two is a value, it is a um, constant, and so that is a constant coefficient of my natural log function, coefficients stay. So here's my dy dx or y prime, coefficients stay, so one over natural log of two, whatever value that is, is going to stay in my derivative. And then the derivative of natural log of a function is that derivative, so 15 x squared minus 17 over itself, five x cubed minus 17 x. And that's it, you are done. So when you look back at this answer, it is absolutely possible to go right from the beginning statement where your y equals log base two to this derivative. You should notice that whatever your base is, that becomes a one over natural log of two or whatever that base is um, as a coefficient. So some people do just have a natural log of two multiplied into their denominator, but then it's just the derivative of that argument over itself, and I just highlighted the argument in green. So that one really didn't have a whole lot of um, log properties to use, whereas the next one we're gonna use some of our algebraic log properties to rewrite first. This first one just really uses that change of base. Okay, so looking at number two, let's spend some time rewriting using these log properties. Okay, so what I mean by that is really I have a log of a product and I have a common log. So even though the base isn't there, hopefully we recognize this to be a base 10. Base 10 sounds like it would be helpful, but really our natural log derivatives are the most convenient and efficient to do. So we will change that base to be an E. So I will eventually have to use that change of base idea um, so that it's a little bit easier to do the derivative. So um, I have a product. Now I'm just gonna see this for right now as 11x cubed times e to the seven x. So this is still y equals, I'm just rewriting, becomes log base 10, which you can write, or you can just say log, because it's common log, it's assumed to be 10, of 11x cubed plus log, again, base 10, or common logs, so you don't have to write it, of e to the seven x. 
I do have to be really careful about the next property that we're going to use. So if I look at this second term here, this 7x is an exponent of my entire base e. So yes, that exponent can come in front of that logarithm. But this 3 in the first logarithm is only an exponent to the x. It is not an exponent of the 11. So I cannot bring this 3, for example, out front because it does not apply to that 11. So that is something that I would not be able to do. Okay, so one thing I can do though is I can see this is log 11 times that x cubed. So 11 is one um, factor and x cubed is the other. So I can rewrite this one more time here. y equals log, I'm seeing this as a product, so that becomes a sum, log of 11 plus log of x cubed. And if you want to put 11 in parentheses, you can. And then plus, like we talked about in the second one, that 7x is the exponent of the e of your entire base there, so I can bring 7x out in front of log of e. Now it's not log base e, so just be careful as you write that. Well, if you wanted to expand um, one more time so that you're, you're not having to use too many properties um, when you do the derivative, or too many derivative rules rather, you could bring that 3 out front. So I could say y equals log of 11, which is just a numerical value, right? That's a constant, plus 3 log of x plus 7x log of e. Now, log of e is a number. So I am going to just write, here's a number. This is also just a number, right? Those are values. The first one is what I would say is a constant. So this log of 11 is a constant, right? You're just adding that on to your problem. This log base e in the end is what I would call a constant coefficient because you're multiplying that by 7 and the x. Okay, I believe I'm ready for the derivative now. So y prime or dy dx, well the derivative of a constant is zero. I don't have to write that down, but just so you can see term by term here. And then in order to do the derivative of log of x, again, you can come off to the side and talk about your change of base property. So log base 10 of x is really the same thing as natural log of x over natural log of 10. Or the way we were writing it to be a little bit more helpful was 1 over ln 10 in front and then natural log of x like so. So I'm going to have 3 for my derivative, right? Because 3 is a coefficient that stays. 1 over ln 10 or 1 over the natural log of 10 is my coefficient, and then I'm doing the derivative of natural log of x, which would be the derivative of my argument, 1 over x. So the derivative of log x is this 1 over natural log of 10 times the 1 over x. You could write that as one um, fraction, or you can keep it separated as two, whatever you like. And then the last term is 7x log of e. Well, log of e is some number, right? So this is really 7 log of e. If you need to put the base there, you can, because again, that's just a numerical value and it's being multiplied by 7, so that hangs on. So I'm really just doing the derivative of x, which is times 1, so I don't really need to write times 1. So my derivative, I don't need to say 0 plus, so I, I will just start with the 3 times 1 over natural log of 10 times 1 over x plus 7 log e. And again, you could say log base 10 just so you're clear with yourself if you choose. Okay, so let's talk exponential functions like so. So I have 10 to an exponent, and now my variables are in my exponent. 
So I will sort of prove this to you um, so you can always do it using natural log, which will also help us practice our natural log differentiation. So um, if I know the exponential derivative sort of rule here, I can go right to y prime. Well, and I'll tell you why in a few minutes here, but it is itself, right? So I'm going to copy it down, 10 to the 4x squared minus 6 cotangent of 5x. And then I have natural log of the base, so natural log of 10. And then apply the chain rule. So now I have times the derivative of that entire exponent. And the derivative of the exponent, derivative of the 4x squared minus 6 cotangent of 5x, well, that's 8x. And then the derivative of cotangent of an angle is the opposite or negative cosecant squared. But I have this negative in front, so this will be plus 6 cosecant squared of the angle and then times the derivative of the angle, so times 5. And just to be clear on what we're multiplying by 5, I might move that. So I might multiply, you know, that 5 times 6, and either write 5 times 6, or I can just write 30 cosecant squared 5x. That way you don't accidentally multiply your angle by anything. And I'm theoretically done. Or you can use natural log to rewrite. So using natural log as a function to rewrite your original equation. And by that I mean we're going to take the natural log of both sides of this equation. So I'm just going to write down what I started with. Okay, and I'm going to physically take the natural log of the left and the natural log of the right. And you're only allowed to do that once on the left, once on the right, because again, we're taking each side, we're, we're applying a function to each side. So you can only do that once on the left, once on the right. So I'll use my natural log properties now to say that when I have this exponent here, this applies to my entire base, right? My base being 10. So I can bring the exponent down in front of my natural log. So I have natural log of y equals this in parentheses 4x squared minus 6 cotangent of 5x times this natural log of 10. And what I want us to remember is natural log of 10 is some number, right? This is a coefficient of this now 4x squared minus 6 cotangent 5x. So I think I'm ready to do the derivative, and it's not too terrible if we remember our derivative of natural log. Well, derivative of natural log of a function is that derivative, so y prime, over itself. Again, derivative of natural log of a function should be the function's derivative over itself. It's applying the chain rule already. Equals... The derivative now of that 4x squared minus 6 cotangent of 5x is all going to be multiplied by that natural log of 10. That natural log of 10 is a coefficient, so it will hang on on the end. So I'm going to make sure I put this whole thing in parentheses, whatever that derivative becomes, and natural log of 10 is still there. So derivative of 4x squared is 8x. And then we already talked about the derivative of, we did this above, 6 um, cotangent of 5x is going to become this positive 6 cosecant squared of 5x times 5. And so we wrote it as plus 30. Okay, so I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to say this is plus 30 cosecant squared of 5x. And then it's times that natural log of 10 but you have not solved for y prime. So this is where people stop maybe one step too early. Solve for y prime. So I'm going to multiply both sides by y, the whole right side, and y is your original equation. So I'm going to say y prime equals, and we're going to copy this down, 8x plus 30 cosecant squared of 5x and natural log of 10 as a factor, and then the original y, which was 10 to the 
4x squared minus 6 cotangent of 5x. There's my derivative. And what you'll notice is that these two derivatives are 100% equivalent. You have three factors in each. So here's one factor, that 8x plus 30 cosecant squared of 5x. So I've got that. That matches. Oops, I didn't mean to highlight the natural log of 10 there. And then I've got the natural log of 10, right? And then I've got the original function. So let's do one more. Okay, so I have 3 to the 7x sine x as my exponent here. I do have a product. Hopefully you can see that when you look at that one. So if I just apply my exponential derivative sort of rule, I can actually go straight to the derivative. So it is itself times natural log of the base and then apply chain rule derivative of your exponent. So the derivative of your exponent, like we said, is product rule. So the product rule of 7x sine x would be I'll do the derivative of 7x first. So 7, leave sine x alone, plus now I'll leave 7x alone and do the derivative of sine of x, which is sine of x. You are done. But okay, we get we get to a test or we get somewhere down the road and we're like, I can't remember what that derivative rule is. I also don't really get yet why the original function is always a part of our answer. So okay, let's just take the natural log of both sides and let's use natural log to help us with this derivative. And it should make sense why we're using natural log to help us and that's because our exponents are variables. And remember, logarithms were created because if I was given an equation like 2 to the x equals 8, I know x is 3. But if we were given the equation 2 to the x equals 9, now I know it's a little bit more than 3, but I'm not 100% sure what the exact value is. So in order to solve for that um, and have an inverse mathematical function to exponents, we have logarithms. Okay. So I also know from my logarithm, logarithm properties that this exponent can come down in front. So 7x sine x is a coefficient of ln 3. And okay, so now that we've rewritten this function um, using natural log of both sides, I can see that I really just have a product. Now natural log of 3 is a coefficient or a number. So that is going to come along for the ride, right? Coefficients stay when I do derivatives, so I'm just going to keep it there on the end. You could technically do a triple product, but then every time you're doing um, the derivative of natural log of 3, it's a derivative of a constant, so that whole entire term would turn out to be 0. So I'm just going to simplify this a little bit and take the derivative using product rule of two functions here. I'm going to take 7x as my first factor, and sine of x as my second factor. Now, if 7 and natural log of 3, you know, multiplied well, like let's say natural log of 3 was just 2, well, I know what 7 times 2 is, and I would just write 14. But natural log of 3 is irrational, but it still is a coefficient, so it's just going to stay um, in my derivative. So here we go with the derivative. So the derivative of natural log of a function is the derivative of that argument or function over itself. And then here's my product rule. So derivative of the yellow or 7x is going to be 7. Leave your sine x alone. Plus, now I'm going to write down the yellow or 7x, that first factor. And the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. Again, natural log of 3 is a coefficient that will just stay. Okay, so now just solve for y prime. Well, I'm dividing by y, so I'm going to multiply the left-hand side by y and the right-hand side by y. We are in single variable calculus. So I want to identify what y is. And y was the original function, 3 to the 7x sine x. And again, I should be at the exact same place I was in the beginning. So I have, let's see, where's my derivative? I have the original function. Yep, there it is. 
I have natural log of 3 as another factor, yep. And I have 7 sine x plus 7x cosine x as my third factor. So even though it's in different order, all the three factors are still there in equivalent. So that begs the question, if you look at these two, why do you always have the original function when you're taking the derivative of an exponential function, like 3 to the x, or 10 to the 4x squared, or 3 to the 7x, right? Why are you always going to have the original? Well, because if you proved it to yourself, and you use the natural log of both sides technique here, you're going to see that your derivative is y prime over y in both. And so the way you solve for that is multiplying both sides of the equation by y. And so you're always going to be multiplying by that original equation. And so hence you have the original right, equation in your derivative. So hopefully that will help you. I hope you found these four examples helpful. You can always go to a, you know, online derivative calculator and practice some on your own. Um, but I hope you have learned something by watching this. Thanks for watching.